All right, Shalom on Yasha'Allah. I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahusha, Ba'ashim Rakat Kadash, the ball honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to you, brothers, through the four corners of the earth, preaching this word and also laboring in this word of true love and sincerity. And may blessings fall upon the houses of those men, the elect men that's preaching the word of Yah, Ba'ashim Yahusha, in all true faith and sincerity. And also may blessings fall upon the houses of the men, women, and children, which is also known as the great multitude in the book of Revelation, the seventh chapter, the ninth verse, all right, which believe on the word of Yah, Bashim Yahushah, and Shalom to the hopeful elect. So um, this is an ongoing um, continuation of the series of precept upon precept, all right, and um, today is a uh, we're going to go into Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. I right, but first and foremost, you know, as I start off like I did with the rest of the precept upon precept uh, lessons, we start off with, with uh, Isaiah 28th chapter, starting at the ninth verse. All right. It says, whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Right. So when you first come into this thing, right, when you come first come into this faith, when you come into the truth, you know, uh, you start to drink the milk. OK, which those are the basic things of the scriptures. You are considered a babe um, until you're able to get older and uh, eat the strong meat. Right. Until you eat the strong meat, which those are the deeper things of the scriptures. You know, but for, you first come in, you know, as a newborn babe and you drink the milk. All right. So it says, whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, upon precept line upon line, line upon line, here little and there little. OK, so this is how you read the Bible correctly. You read it precept upon precept, right? Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. This is how you get um, the true understanding of the scriptures. Also, uh, by the, the spirit of the Lord has to be dealing with you. And he has to be dealing with those men that are set up to teach you also. All right. So verse 10 again, it says, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. So. When you uh, uh, read a, a you read a scripture, all right, and a brother will say, "I got a precept." He is about to uh, bring out another scripture that is somewhere else in the Bible that aligns with the precept that the first brother have read. Okay, the, the second precept is going to shine light, you know, or help you understand the first precept more clear. Okay, the precept when we read precepts. It's they are backing up the first scripture. OK, and they all tie together, you know, particularly saying the same thing. All right. And I'm going to show you uh, once again in this lesson, you know, today. All right. Because this is how you read the Bible correctly. This is how you get the, uh, the understanding of the Bible by reading it uh, precept upon precept. You know, uh, you may be reading something in Genesis. Right. And you might get. You know, uh, 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 un the understanding of it, you know, by going to the book of uh, Ezekiel. All right. That's how the Bible is to, uh, broken down. man. Like we say, the Bible is a, a coded book. Right. It's written in mysteries. It's uh, parabolic. Right. And only the men of the Lord knows these mysteries of the scriptures. Right, because the Lord reveals his secrets into who? The servants, the prophets. Amos 3, verse 7. It says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets. So like he revealeth he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. You see? And these are all Israelites because we were given the service of the Heavenly Father, right? And the only only the only servants can be are who? Israelites. Let's get that Isaiah 45, I believe verse 
4. It says, For Jacob, my servant's sake, in Israel, mine elect. You see, so Israel can only be the elect. You see that? But in what? For Jacob, my servant's sake. So we only can be the servants of the Lord, and we only can do the service of the Lord. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. With that being said, let's go to the book of Romans. Let's get a precept, right? As I said, we only can be the, uh, do the service of the Lord, right? As his servants. Let's go to the book of Romans, the ninth chapter. Um, the fourth verse, you know, I want to get to the point. Uh, you know what? Let's start at verse three. This is Apostle Paul speaking. It says, For I could wish that myself were a curse for, from Hamashiach, for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption. Only Israelites can be adopted back into the Heavenly Father Yahweh through Yahweh Shai, right? And the glory, which is the kingdom, and the covenants, the old and the new, and the giving of the law, and the service of the the heavenly father or, or the most high and the promises you see that so like i said the servants of the lord is israel man jacob my servant's sake and israel mine elect okay so the servants of the lord is israelites and only the elect are israelites okay so all this belongs to us the adoption the glory the covenants and the giving of the law the service of the Heavenly Father and the promises, okay, all given to Israel. You see? All right, so uh, let's get into the, the lesson I want to get into. You know, that's kind of you know what the Spirit uh, wanted to go into before I went into the actual lesson. Uh, go to the book of Deuteronomy 32, verse 39, Okay. And it reads, it says, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So we're going to deal with the first, uh, on the first couple verses. Okay. Let's read it again. It says, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. So everything goes through the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father is the one that pours judgment on people and puts them to death, right? The uh, the Lord is the, the one that uh, puts that spirit in that baby inside uh, a mother's womb for that baby to come alive, right? It says, I wound. The Lord is the one that uh, wounds you, Okay put you in some type of injury or whatever, right? Any, uh, or a manner of disease and I heal. And the Lord's the only, the only one that can heal you, all right? These different drugs people take and these different procedures, these doctors do on the people. Hey, if it wasn't for the Lord to let that go through, then you'll be uh, in that messed up state that you're in. But it's through the mercies of the Lord that what he has healed you. Okay, so don't get it twisted. All praise and honor and glory goes to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. Regardless. Okay, so let's get some precepts backing that up. First one that we're going to get is Wisdom of Solomon. Um, 16, verse 13. And it reads, it says, Ooh. Let's start at verse 12. It says, For it was neither herb or herb, nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health. But what? But thy word, O Lord, which healeth all things. You see? Because this word, when you go get down to it, this word is the thing that heals you. It only, not only heals you, this word cleanses you, man. Okay? This word help, helps renew renew your mind, man. Hey, that's why we always like to say, uh, uh, this, this word, which is also known as water, it baptizes you. Okay, so let's read that again. It says, for it was neither herb nor mollifying pleasure that restored them to hell. Right? So all these uh, these medicines that the Lord created out of the earth, it wasn't that. Right? Even though we know that, you know, uh, 
they can uh, heal you, right? It says, nor mollifying plastic that restored them to health, but thy word. So we know thy word is the ultimate healer, man. O Lord, which healeth all things, for thou hast power of life, right? And death. Thou leadest to the gates of hell, meaning the grave, and bring up and bringest up again. You see that? You see, so the Lord has power and have control over all spirits, man. Right? He's the one that killeth. He's the one to make of life. Right? He's the one to bring up down to the grave. Or he's the one uh lead us down to the grave and, and bring you up again. The Lord is the one that does all that. Does all this, man. Uh this one in uh, Jeremiah. Let's see a soul. Or mine. It's lock it, bear with me. So let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4 says, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. So every all souls what? Belong to the Lord, man. Okay? All souls belong to the Lord. And he can do whatever he wills. Whatsoever he will. Okay. So with that, let's go to the book of Psalms. Right? Remember, we're harping off Deuteronomy uh, 32 and 39. I kill if I make alive, I wound, I heal. Right? Psalms 103. Start at. I'll start at one. It says, A Psalm of David. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. See, the Lord's the only one that can heal your diseases, man. If you're plagued with a certain disease, he can, he's the ultimate healer. Okay, he's, yeah, right? He's the ultimate healer. It says, uh, who, yep, and who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with the good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles, the Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. You see? So that's the point on that. Let's go to the book of Sirach. Right? And this is how you get understanding of the Bible, man. Precept upon precept. Okay? See how I uh, started with the book of Deuteronomy and I go to Wisdom of Solomon. Then to the book of Psalms. Now I'm going to the book of Sirach. You know, and, with the, and the other precepts that I may gather through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemuel that, you know, this lesson may be edifying. Okay, so let's go to the book of Sirach 34, verse 17. It says, let's start at hmm, 16. It says, for the eyes of the Lord are upon them that love him. He is their mighty protection and strong stay, a defense from heat, and they cover from the sun at noon, and a, pres a preservation from stumbling and a help from falling. Woohoo! He raised up the soul and light of the eyes. He giveth health, life, and blessing. See? So all these different things come from the Lord, man. Okay? He's the controller of all every, everything you see, man. Okay? Hey, and then he also has given everything in it to the hands of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, man. Everything has become subject to him. You see? Hey, and guess what? We are all sick, okay? We all need a physician, a physician, man. We need Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. That's why the different brothers, we are crying out because we need salvation, man, okay? We need that ultimate healing, you see? Right? 
And we can acknowledge that we are sick, man. Okay? And we need healing from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. You know? But what we have now, we have the comforter, right? Which is the word, you know? And uh, and this word actually comforts us, man. Right? And it, and it heals our spirits to a decree, too. Okay? But we truly need uh, that ultimate healing, man. All right? Our, our bodies being renewed and our bodies being restored, you know, along with our mind. Okay? Let's um go to the book real fast of Luke, the fifth chapter, right? Because the scriptures say this. Let's, let's start at 31. It says, it says, And Yahweh shall answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick you see so if you say if you're not complaining if nothing's wrong right if you say you're not sick and you're, you're whole and you're good you're saying you don't need yahweh shy man you don't need saving you're not sick you're good you see but we acknowledge that we are sick man and we need the ultimate healing from yahweh bashi yahweh shy man okay because we we know that we're sick i'll read that again it says yahweh shy answering said unto them they that are whole need not a physician right and that's what we need. But they that are sick. Okay. Uh, verse 32, it says, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. You see that? Okay. So I just wanted to get that scripture. You know, as that made that was making a statement how, you know, uh, we need, uh, we need healed, man. All right. So let's get one more. All right. One more precept dealing with uh, Deuteronomy 32, verse 39. This is uh, 1 Samuel 2, verse 6, right? It says, The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. So all these scriptures, you know, proves you like that what? Hey, it's the Heavenly Father that killeth and maketh alive, man. Not Satan, man. Because what you people don't know is that you have been, what you have been taught that uh, the religion of Christianity, you were taught that Satan, you know, is the one that's out here doing uh, all this work. But it's really, it really all goes back to the Lord. Okay. And Satan does the bidding for the Lord. Okay. You can read that in the book of Job, the first and second chapter. All right. Satan does not do nothing, you know, without uh, uh, the green light from the Heavenly Father. Period. All right. Lord willing, I'll go into that lesson as well. So it says, the Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. You see, so all these different things come from the Lord. If you are, you know, I'm doing well, hey, that came from the Lord. If you were poured down to a bum, a bum on the street, uh, that came from the Lord. If the Lord pours out judgment on you, we're to the point where uh, you get put, put to death or or you're a... Uh, you're, uh, you have a, a you're you're paralyzed or you have a, a a type of sickness or a plague on you, right? If you got cancer or you know some type of disease, no matter what it is, it all comes from the Lord, you know. It all comes from the Lord. It all comes from Him. Contrary to popular belief, but with that being said, let's get another let's get another one real fast. Um, Isaiah forty five verse seven. All right, here you go. It says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. You see? So everything comes back, right? Everything goes back and it all comes from the Lord. You see? It's about balance. This is all balance. Okay? The Heavenly Father is about balance, okay? All right, so let's read this again and close out Deuteronomy 32. Verse 39, it says, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Because when the heavenly father sends them, uh, you know, them angels out to get you, them, them death angels to do the bidding of the Lord, they don't rebel against the Lord neither, right? They come to get you. you there's no way you could deliver yourself out of the hand of the Lord, man. All right, just like, uh, uh, the movie Final Destination, when people be trying to cheat death, you can't cheat death with the Lord, right? When it's your time, it's your time. 
You know, there's no way you can alter it or nothing. That's why when you watch Final Destination, they try to alter the death, you know. But, you know, they turn around. There's another type of way that death comes. Okay? <laughs> That's how the Lord is, man. You know, you try to get out of it one way, but here he, he come get you another way. All right? Just using the, anal an the analogy from that movie. All right, so let's deal with this. It says, neither there can, neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Let's get a preset. Let's go to the book of Tobit. Um, 13 and 2. Uh, I'll start at 1. It says, then Tobit wrote a prayer of rejoicing and said, blessed be the God or the power that liveth forever and blessed be his kingdom. We're talking about the God of the Israelites, right? It's a it says, for he doeth scourge and have mercy. He leadeth down to hell, meaning the grave, and bringeth up again. Neither is there any that can avoid his hand. You see that? You see how that lines right up with Deuteronomy 32, verse 39 of what I just read? That's a precept, okay? And this is how you, you uh, get more better understanding of reading the Bible, okay? These scriptures, you know, reading a precept. Right, it's a scripture backing up another scripture and shedding light on it as well, okay? Helping to further your understanding of what the first scripture said or just aligning up with that scripture, just backing up the point of it, okay? And this is how you read the Bible, all right? Hey, but first of all, the spirit of the Lord has to be dealing with you and the spirit has, of the Lord has to be dealing with those teachers to teach you the correct way and the correct doctrine of this word, man, Okay? All right, but with that, that's that's going to be it for the lesson. You know, uh, this was precept upon precept, Deuteronomy 32, um, verse 39. Um, but I hope this lesson was edifying. With that, I want to say shalom. Until next time, shalom.